Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next episode of the Classic Rivalry here at Innovative Field. As Garrett, it's the Section 5 Class AA sectional final, as is the Victor Blue Devils going up against the Fairport Red Raiders. Tell me more about this one. Yeah, Michael, we've got a beautiful game here on a beautiful day in upstate New York, and it's going to be taking place between the Fairport Red Raiders and the Victor Blue Devils. And to get it started, it'll be a little bit of a family affair between Coach Sean Recker for the Blue Devils and shortstop Jackson Rucker, the nephew of Sean Rucker. So an all-around exciting place to be here for the Rucker family as we're going to crown ourselves Section 5's AA champion here shortly in a couple hours. You know, it ought to be a fun one. I'm Michael Rickey alongside Garrett Clare. And Victor, they're in the field first with Carter Fink on the mound, the ace for the Blue Devils. Yeah, Carter Fink, it's been a year of up and downs for him, but his last couple starts, he's really lowered his ERA, and we saw him be very dominant earlier on in sectionals in the quarterfinal. I'm expecting nothing less from here on the biggest stage as he will take his talents to Niagara University, University to keep playing college baseball next year. Yeah, Division I school, and Victor's got a couple of those guys as they have Cooper Loyal as well, a guy who's a veteran on this team, plays shortstop for the Blue Devils. They're going to look to count on him today. Yeah, Michael, these two league opponents faced off twice earlier in the year, and it was a split doubleheader as Fairport took the first one 7 nothing, and Victor was able to bounce back and take game two a couple days later, 11-2. to two. So neither of these games were really close. It was a seven-run differential and then nine. So I'm expecting it to even out a little bit. I think we're going to get a more of a low-scoring game, but I think this is going to be a great game to watch, and I'm excited. And we'll tune everyone in here as... We're almost underway is Steven Rizzolo. So Rizzolo, the catcher for the Red Raiders. Lines one up the middle and it's a base hit. So a nice start for Fairport as Rizzolo's aboard. And you can hear the Fairport faithful right now, Garrett. Michael, I love the idea by Rizzolo trying to jump on Finkus right away as he just attacks the first pitch and lines it up the middle. You know, these Fairport hitters, I think they're going to see themselves having a lot of success if they can stay ahead in the count and hit the fastball. If Carter Fink is dropping his curveball and his changeup and other off-speed pitches into the strike zone later in the count, I think that's where we're going to start to see a problem. As William Stanek, the number two hitter, third base will step up. First pitch from Fink is a strike. And Michael, Fairport without their head coach after the little scandal, he brought in a couple college players to give the Red Raiders a new look, and now he will be suspended this game. Grounded and through for a base hit, and it goes right through the hole between shortstop Cooper Loyal and third baseman Grady Kessler. And the first two at-bats for the Red Raiders are successful with singles. Yeah, just three pitches in, you saw Stanek take the curveball there. He rolled over a little bit, found a nice spot in the infield. A good piece of hitting overall, though. Gets down the line. And you've already got a runner in scoring position with no outs. And your three hitter, Sam Miller, he's hitting above 400 this year with three home runs, can do it all. Even a great pitcher on the mound. I'm excited to see this at bat. First pitch from Fink in there for a strike. And Miller is the pitcher for the Red Raiders as well today. So he'll be in a battle with Fink. And I think that's really going to be the moral of the story, which pitcher gets it done early, especially. This one's grounded foul. Yeah, Michael, the first couple innings are always tough if you're a pitcher trying to settle in the game, especially in the environment we have here. So for Carter Fink, if he's able to keep his cool, he needs to get this out right here. He cannot let Sam Miller get on and turn it over to the four-hitter. So I think Carter just needs to take a deep breath, take the scene all in, and just get back to the basics. The 0-2 on its way from Fink. Just outside, and it's going to be one and two. That's great location there for Carter. Uh, I think that's right where he wanted it as well, so a good sign there if you're Victor. So the one and two with two runners aboard from Fink. Swing and a miss. There's strike three. Fink gets the first out for the Blue Devils, a big one, as Miller goes down on strikes. That'll bring the left fielder Owen Andretta up to the plate. But, Michael, if you're Sam Miller in that situation, you cannot have a strikeout. You need to put the ball in play, find a way to advance the runners so they don't even have to score on a hit. They can even score on an out. But great job there of bouncing back by Carter Fink. So here is the number four hitter, Owen Andretta. He's playing left field today. The sophomore Owen Andretta. Stepping right into the cleanup spot. This lineup is loaded with power, and he is the source of it. I think his pitch is low. 2-0. Great atmosphere on our hands here today at Innovative Field. 
it's, I'd say it's around a 50-50 split between Fairport and Victor fans, maybe a little bit more of Fairport. That red can be a little more vibrant at times. That is true. The Victor colors. There's a strike. And the count goes two and one. Great pitch there. You can't fall 3-0 in a count to the four hitter with guys on first and second and just one out. So a grown man pitch right there from Fink. A 2-1, swung on and missed. Count even at 2-2. Two two. Fink yeah. looking for a big strikeout. After he sped him up with the 2-0 fastball, he came back with a change up there. That's a great pitch right there. And Andretta was out in front of it. So Fink will even the count up 2-2. Two two. I'm expecting something, maybe a curveball, something away here. 2-2, two, two. two runners on. Top of the first. That pitch is low and outside. Good pick by Zeiser. Well, we did get something away, but he went with straight heat and said, yep. uh, it looks like he got a little juiced up for that pitch. And it was pretty far outside, but he needs to come back here and find the strike zone. So Fink's 3-2 is low, ball four. Bases are loaded with one out as the number five hitter, Scotty Thompson, DHing today comes up. Yeah, the DH, Scotty Thompson. One of the many Tigers, the Grota Pro Tigers, playing in this game is we have seven on Fairport and two on Victor. I actually also played on that team for a couple of years, so uh, it's a little friendly fire here, but Scotty Thompson will dig in in a huge spot. He cannot strike out here, Michael, and got to try to avoid the hard grounders up the middle, try to get something to the outfield. First pitch is in there on the inside corner part of the plate, 0-1. Good bounce back pitch there from Fink. You like to see that if you're Victor. And if you're Mitchell Shelbury and Cooper Loyal, you got to be alert and try to turn two, try to get out of this inning with no runs. Foul straight back, 0-2. Fink obviously looking for the pivotal double play ball. Yeah, that's really what he's looking for. I think he'd take a strike out here as well, though. It's, Thompson's uh, yeah. got to stay in his zone and not chase. As He's really just got to find a way to put the ball in play however he can. Try to get Rizzolo Rizzo home from third. Sliced foul. Victor riding high into sectionals on a seven-game win streak in the regular season, and they made it nine with the two wins in sectionals so far. Yeah, and Fairport's made it three in a row with their couple of sectional wins, so two teams that are coming in on a high, and two rivals, like you mentioned, both double-A league opponents. Followed straight back again, 0-2. Oh and, and Thompson is now offered on all four of Carter's pitches, so I think... His mindset going into this at bat was let's be aggressive, let's pull one out there, and let's get the fans riled up. Let's get some runs on the board early. The 0-2. Popped up in foul territory. It'll make the seats. Good job to fight that pitch off. Looked like it might have caught the outside edge on the curveball there from Fink. Fink trying to put him away. The five hitter, Thompson. Another foul ball. He's fighting. And Michael, throughout baseball games, you like to see who can win the battles where the hitter keeps following pitchers off. It can be very frustrating as a pitcher. This is one of those early battles. I know it's only 0-2, but this will already be the sixth pitch of the at-bat as Thompson has now fouled off four pitches in a row. It is... In there, strike three. Fink delivers. Big strikeout for Carter Fink. And now there are two outs with the bases loaded. Michael, As we mentioned how it's going to be a family affair. There There's we go. no bigger way to start it off than there the bases go, loaded. Man. Two outs, top of the first at bat for shortstop Jackson Rucker. Boy, he would love to make his uncle a little angry here with a base hit. This one's tapped right to Fink. He's going to fire it to first. And he gets out of the jam. Carter Fink with a pivotal ground ball off the bat of Jackson Rucker. And three runners are left stranded on the base paths. 0-0. Zero, zero. We go to the bottom of the first here at Innovative Field.
And we're back in the bottom of the first inning as a leadoff man, Mitchell Schalberg, will get things started for the Blue Devils with the bats. First pitch is hit over the third baseman, Stanek, and Mitchell's aboard like he's been all season with a leadoff single. Yeah, Michael's been a headlight for this Victor Blue Devils team all season, and nothing's going to change there as that's now him and Rizzolo for Fairport have both attacked the first pitch and sent it into the outfield for a hit. We'll see if Carter Fink will follow William Stanek like he did to Rizzolo and get the first two runners aboard. But I love the, the aggressiveness early from Shelberg there as he just bounces it on this grass infield, freshly cut. You're going to get the, those type of bounces. First pitch is outside, 1 0. From Miller. 2 0 on Fink. Victor trying to avenge its loss last year in the same spot against the McQuaid Knights team, which they lost 2 1. So a lot of guys back from that team want to change the result. 2 0. Misses again. 3 0 to Fink. Part of such a pl playing at such a cool venue like this is really just. Being able to take it all in, but not being overwhelmed and being able to play your own game. And Fink walks on four pitches. And you can see he's hyped about that as Victor replicates what Fairport did. First two runners are aboard with a single from Schalberg and a walk from Fink. And here is the number three hitter, Cooper Loyal. Yeah, I think the emotions are just running a little high for uh, Sam Miller right now. I think he needs to just sort of settle in just like Carter did. Uh, it's not a great time to do that, no, with... Cooper Loyal stepping up to the plate. Probably maybe the hottest hitter on this Victor lineup. Foul straight back here at the booth. Right in front of us. It's going to be 0-1-1. Loyal will be playing baseball at Albany next year. He's part of that Great Dane squad. The 0-1. High and inside. You can tell by the fans' reaction. They don't like it, and it's 1-1. And that's the thing with Sam Miller, Michael. At times, you know, we know the velocity is going to be there, but it's the accuracy that's the question, as he can be very wild at times, especially so far in this game. The 1-1 is hit out to right field and deep but foul. Loyal got around. He, if he got around on that one, that was, that was hit a while. Yeah, that ball was slicing. It looked like maybe right when contact was made, could have landed in the dirt there right by fair ground, but that one's going to head foul out towards the sweet spot sign in right field. So the one and two from Miller. Low and outside. Two and two. Loyal able to check his swing there, almost offered. That will look like to be a slider, maybe a curveball there from Sam Miller. But the count runs even here. Two, two from Miller. Upstairs, three and two. So the count's full to the number three hitter, Cooper Loyal with two runners on for Victor, and a big moment here. And Miller's gonna have to come to him. Loyal's gotta be ready to hit here. As he cannot afford to walk the bases loaded and bring up Weston Elkovich. Loyal calls time to gather himself. The three, two to Loyal. Low ball four. Two Great. straight walks for Victor. Looked like it could have been a strike from up here right on the border. Right, painted, tried to paint the outside corner, but the ump did not give him the call. And that's two walks in a row now for Miller as the infield will call time and bring it in and try to settle down their star player. So the power threat, Weston Elkovich, the lefty bat for the Blue Devils. Four home runs on the season, that's a team high. He shined in moments like this with the bases loaded at driving runners in. But not in the same spot last year here, at, which was once Frontier Field, now Innovative Field. Weston yeah. trying to have a better performance. Yeah, I think we're going to see a bounce back day from Weston Elkovich. I think he's going to be very aggressive early. Grounded to the second baseman. Oh, and he booted it. One run scores as Schalberg. And the bases stay loaded as Roselle with an error. And Victor leads one to nothing with nobody out with the bases loaded. Here at the bottom of the first. Jonathan Roselle, the second baseman, just a freshman. Maybe the moment's a little too big for him as he boots that one. But, Michael, you can't let the ball come up on you and eat you up like that. you got to go and get it, especially on a slow chopper like that. So here's Jamison Rosigliano. He takes high, 1-0. Especially when your pitcher is struggling 
to get outs, and then you get them to roll over like that. If you're the infield, you got to back them up and make these plays. Yeah, that was a routine play to make. Here is the 1-0. Did he go? Yes, he did. 1-1. One one. Sigliano offers at the high pitch. The count moves to 1-1. One one. So the 1-1 one one from Miller. Sliced foul. Michael Sam Miller seems to be settling back in here as he moves back to the windup, getting out of the stretch as the bases are loaded. These runners have nowhere to go. You can see the Victor fans feeling it right now as everyone's on their feet. The one two to Risigliano is high. Two and two. A big spot here for Risigliano. You'd like to see him just drive a runner in with at least a sacrifice fly or a ground out. Hold, strike three. Sam Miller gets his first strikeout. It looks like we might already be having an early exit from the student section from one of the Victor fans. Wonder what happened there, Garrett. Yeah. Uh, sometimes the game can get a little too big even for the kids in the student section, but back to the field. Swing and a miss. And from Ruffalo. Adam Ruffalo now, the five hitter on this Blue Devils, six hitter on this Blue Devils squad. Michael, uh, Adam was very hot early on in the season. He's cooled off a little bit, but he's really stepped up his game in sectionals in the past two games. A couple big hits against Rush Henrietta and Webster Schrader have landed him hitting in the sixth spot in the sectional final. Runner goes, and he scores! Carter Fink comes across home plate for the Blue Devils. A lot just happened on that play, Michael. Brought me back to last year when these two teams faced off in the semifinal, and it was a failed a suicide squeeze attempt from Fairport. This time, Victor tries the suicide squeeze attempt, and it does not work as Adam Ruffalo misses, but the catcher, Steven Rizzolo, cannot handle the ball, and Carter Fink will slide in safely to put runners on second and third with just one out. Ooh, a, lot of di a lot to digest on that play. And Ruffalo grounds one to Rizzell. Makes the play this time. And there's two away, but a run scores as Loyal comes across home plate, and it's 3 nothing Victor here in the bottom of the first. Yeah, don't know if I love that call from the Fairport coach, the assistant now stepping into the head coaching role, as he brings the infield back with one out in second and third, allowing a run to score on just an infield hit like that. If I'm him, it's already 2 nothing. I'm trying to limit the damage, but maybe he thinks that his boys are going to bring in lots more runs this game. So here's Grady Kessler, the third baseman for the Blue Devils. He has an opportunity to get an RBI here as well with Elkovich on third base. Yeah, Kessler will try to bring him home with two outs, just the sole runner on third. Count evens up at one and one. The one and one to Kessler. Fouled straight back. One and two. These Victor hitters seem to be aggressive early on, especially these last couple at-bats. First by Jamison, then by Adam, and now Grady falls behind in the count, one, two. Trying to shorten up, just put something maybe right over the second baseman's header up the middle. Miller trying to limit the damage to three runs here in the bottom of the first. The one, two, grounded and snared by Miller, and he gets to his feet and makes the play. A great play from Sam Miller. And, it lim and he does limit the damage to three runs here in the first, but Victor will take that any day of the week, Garrett. Three nothing after one here at Innovative Field.
We are back here at Innovative Field, the top of the second inning underway, as the right fielder, Matthew Linguist, is going to step up to the plate for the Red Raiders. And the story early on so far in the first inning has been, can you capitalize with runners on base? As Victor said yes with three, and Fairport said no, leaving many runners stranded and not able to scratch across any runs in the top of the first. That pitch to Linguist was slapped foul. So Fink will try to not get himself into another situation like he was in the first and have more of a clean inning here in the second. The 0-1. Hi, one and one. Well, Michael, as a pitcher, it always helps when you get that kind of run support, especially early on in just the first inning. Going out there and pitching with a three-run lead as opposed to a tie ball game is a completely different feeling. Hit hard down the third baseline, but foul. And the count's going to go to one and two. And Linquist jumped all over that pitch, just a little out in front as it goes foul right down the left field line. But a good sign there for the number seven hitter in the Fairport lineup. You know, and Fink, you're talking about that run support. Fink was one of the guys that came across home plate, and you saw the intensity that which he had because he knew it meant so much to him going back out there on the mound right now. Yeah, this is a guy who wants to win. He's been here before. He knows what it's like to lose, and he wants to see what it's like to win. The one and two from Fink. Just misses. Count even at two and two. Good patience there from Linquist at the plate, not chasing Fink stuff. Wants to see Carter come to him. So the 2-2. Two -two. In there, strike three. Fink delivers a strikeout. His second one of the day. And Fink able to freeze him with the curveball. And we see a little exchange here from Linquist and Bartusik as the number eight hitter playing first base today. Matthew Bartusik steps up. Maybe a little words of wisdom as Linquist is now talking to the nine hitter, Jonathan Roselle, as well. So I think he saw something out of Fink, and he's trying to let his hitters know before their at-bats come shortly after. I think first pitch is high, 1-0. Inside, 2-0. Two, two of our two sick. Playing first base today for the Red Raiders. And the 2-0. Oh. In hey, there for a strike. <laughs> Michael, it looks like we have our second fan in the Victor student section getting brought out here. I guess there's a no-tolerance policy going on. Not quite sure. Back to the game. Two and one. He's low. Three and one. Bartusa, good patient at bat here. Now Fink is going to have to come to him, throw something in the middle of the zone, and he's got to be ready here. So the three one. Just clips the plate for a strike. Counts full at three and two. See what Fink chooses to go with here. And a walk for Vartusik as it was a close call. Looks like that pitch might have been a little low, maybe a little yeah. outside. Just it looked like it was pretty close. Something that with two strikes. It was a great, it was a great take. Yeah, it was, it was a great pitch and it was a great take. Uh, usually you don't want to take those pitches with two strikes, but it paid off this time. And he'll find himself on the first base with a walk. So here's Jonathan Roselle. Zeiser fires to first. Roselle will try to make up for the air in the first inning that he had out there in the field. There's another strike going two to Roselle. Roselle's only a freshman, so a lot of promise with him. The O2 is outside, one and two. Yeah, this is some great experience to get, especially as just a freshman, as he'll have three more years with the Red Raiders. But I think he'd like to win this one as well. I would agree with that one, Garrett. It counts even at two and two. Fink cannot afford to lose him as he's throwing two straight balls. I would try, if I'm Fink, instead of trying to paint a quarter here, after walking the last hitter, I make sure I'm putting this one in the strike zone. Let my defense make a play. The 2-2 two -two is way outside. Count full at 3-2. and two. Same at bat. Yeah, it looks like you tried to overthrow there a little bit, but you cannot afford to walk this hitter and turn the lineup over. You got to come right after him here. The 3-2 from Fink. High. Ball four. Another walk for the Red Raiders. As Roselle is aboard. 
and that's now back-to-back -back walks on the eight and nine hitters. And I'll bring up the leadoff hitter, Steven Rizzo, who is already singled up the middle in this game as Sean Rucker will jog out, have some words with Carter, try to settle him down. But, Michael, even if Carter is able to work out of this inning and work more innings later on in this game, you have to realize he's thrown a lot of pitches early on, and there is a pitch limit in high school baseball. And it's a big concern for the Blue Devils because their last game went 13 innings long. They used a lot of their bullpen. They, there was a lot of pitches thrown. Weston Elkovich pitched six innings from the eighth, I believe, to the 13th. Like, I, I mean, if this is high school baseball. We go seven innings, and then he had to pitch he had to pitch six and extras. So Victor's used a lot of their guys, and they're going to rely on Fink to get this pitch total down and have some more economical innings. Yeah, and I spoke with Victor Baseball, and they said that Weston Elkovich will be available this game if they need him out well, of the okay. bullpen. Well, that's, that's Even though he did loss. pitch six innings the other night, but he was able to stay under that pitch limit that is allowing him to pitch here tonight if Carter Fink needs to exit the game at some point. There's a strike to Rizzolo. Rizzolo aggressive early in his last at-bat. We'll see if he looks to do the same. And it seems otherwise as he's now behind 0-2 in the count. It was a great pitch right there. Michael, it was the key strikeouts in the first inning. This is another key spot that you cannot afford to strike out in if you're on this Fairport roster. The 0-2. High and outside. 1-2. And, and we saw it 0-2 to Roselle in the last at-bat, and he worked a walk. So just because he's 0-2, I still want to see Carter go after the strike zone right away and not mess around at all. The 1-2. Fouled straight back. Just got a piece of that, as Rizzolo did. And the count stays at one and two. Fink looking for that pivotal strikeout, Garrett. The one-two pitch is laced into right field, and it's going to get down. One run will score. And Fairport gets their first run of the day as Matt Bartusik comes across the plate. 3-1 now. And the bats are hot early for both the Blue Devils and the Red Raiders as Rizzolo lines that one into right center. And Michael, when Rizzolo comes up for a third time in this game, I think we're going to need to see Carter exit at some point as Rizzolo seems to have a great read on what he wants to do up there. I agree. I think, I think you've seen after the first two innings, two base hits for him. He's, feel, he's, he's comfortable at least. And what I thought was going to be a low-scoring affair, this game's on pace to be maybe possibly in the double digits for both teams. If Both teams have come out swinging, and the pitchers have not able, been able to respond so far. First pitch to Stanek is a strike. Stanek's ground ball single between Kessler and Loyal in the deep short hole in his last at-bat, last inning. Oh, Stanek gets plunked, and the bases... That hit the did knob they, of the bat. Did it hit bat. the bat? Oh, hit my god. the goodness. knob of the bat, Michael, as he came around Fink, on a check swing. Fink got extremely lucky, extremely lucky right there, excuse me, as I thought that was. <laughs> wow, he barely, he barely got a piece of that bat. Yeah, right off the knob, a little check swing. I think we would have seen more of a reaction if it did run in on the hands and hit him. And there's a base hit from Stanek. One run scores, as it is Rosello. And Stanek, and Stanek will take second. Loyal not able to control the ball and nobody covers. And Fairport's fired up now. Three to two. That'll go in as a hit and an air as the ball escaped past Loyal. But I think Stanek will take it as he's standing on second with an RBI and moves Rizzolo over to third. So Roselle scores the freshman in the nine hole. And now there's runners on second and third. With Rizzolo and Stanek, who are two, both two for two today. And the number three hitter, the pitcher for today for the Red Raiders, Sam Miller, is up. And he hits one. And it's through. another base hit. One run scores. The as holds, it's Rizzolo. They'll hold Stanek at third, and Miller's fired up as he gives his team to draw this game even here in the top of the second. This has been some exciting baseball early, Michael. It has high scoring to say so. 3-3 <laughs> three, three so far. We're through one and a half, not even. Yeah, we'll see if Sean Rucker looks like he might want to make a change here as he steps out onto the dirt. 
Looks like he's just going to give. Singles, nah. Looks like he's going to give Parker Zeiser the signal as first and third is upon us. But Michael, I think we're one or two hits away from Carter Fink exiting this game. That, it's a wild statement to say if you told me that before the game. So we're all tied up at three. Runner goes. And it's a stolen base for Sam Miller. And a lot of times when teams throw it through, they'll try to send the guy from third to the plate, but Stanek staying put as Miller is able to swipe a bag. And that takes away the double play ball now. It does, and it also could allow two runs to score on a simple base hit. So Owen Andretta, the left fielder, is up for the Red Raiders, looking to add on to what has already been a very successful inning for Fairport. And it's been a walk for Andretta in his last at bat. Fink does have first base open if he chooses. The pitch is low, 2 0. Oh. Garrett, walk me through it. What are we seeing here from Fink? What's going on? Well, Michael, I think we're seeing the emotions run high a little bit. I think he's starting to get a little rattled by this Fairport team, but he's going to Niagara for a reason. He's got great stuff. He just needs to settle in and calm down a little bit. This is no shame to Fink at all. This is just a great all around lineup from Fairport. There's no real weak spot. But it's been the guys that he's put on via walk that have really been the problem for Fink so far. And there's a strike. Nice pitch there. Count goes to two and one. It's one thing when the other team's hitting your pitches really well, but it's another thing when you're also giving guys free passes. The two one fouled back. Two and two. Fairport with five hits on three runs. Ball is low. Count goes three and two. And they only have, Victor, I was about to say this, Garrett, they only have one hit so far, but they have three runs. So yeah. it's been a difference of errors for Roselle at second and just really a, another error behind home plate. The 3 2 is hit out to left field. Deep. Piero going back there, and he can't make the play as it's a ground rule double. Two runs will score for Fairport. That one will take a hop and go up into the seats in They're left field. Fairport celebrating like he They're just hit one out. Run. He did not hit that out. That's a, that's a ground rule double. I don't know what's going on here, Garrett. Yeah, Tyler Pirro immediately put his hands up as it bounced into the seats yeah, in left did. field. And I don't think either any of the umpires caught it as they awarded him a home run, and Fairport's going nuts in front of the dugout. And they'll put him back on second. That's, as the, right, that's the right call. Andretta, though, with a two-run double for the Red Raiders, and they are up 5-3 to three here in the second. And Sean Rucker decides to leave Carter Fink in. This might be the, one of the longest leashes I've seen in a sectional final ever. Yeah, he's going to stick with his guy, who's been dominant this season, but he does it, so far it doesn't look like he has it here today. You gotta respect the choice by Coach Sean Rucker as uh, Carter Fink will still try to get settled in. It's never too late. Thanks to the hitting early on uh, by this Blue Devils team, it's just a two run game. So this game is not out of hand just yet. But Fink does need to dial it back in and get these last two outs in the inning. Here's Scott Thompson. Counts one and one on him. So Andretta is on second. Thompson's at the plate. And there's a strike. Great fastball there from Carter. And three of the top four hitters in this Fairport lineup have now gotten on base in both of their at-bats so far. So Carter's been struggling with the top of the order. Swing and a miss. There's a strikeout for Fink, a much needed one. And, and a guy that Fink now. has had success against in this game, first on the strikeout in the first inning looking, and now Thompson goes down swinging. So he's gotten two of their five outs so far this game. So here is the family affair, <laughs> Jackson Rucker. In another, I would say, big spot, Garrett, because, you know, two outs, runner on second in Andretta, if he scores and you, you increase your lead to three, you know, Victor, they're going to be worried. 
Swing and a wow. miss. Took a cut. <laughs> that was a hack there from the one number one. six hitter in this Fairport lineup. Trying to send a message to his coach on the other side, but very aggressive early on in his last at-bat as he dribbled one back to Fink. There's a strike. One and two. Great pitch right across the inside corner. And the ninth hitter of this inning for this Red Raiders team as the offenses came alive here in the second inning after failing to score with runners on in the first. Barely tapped foul. Great job there by Rucker, though. He did commit on that swing, but he was able to just tap it foul and live to see another pitch as Zeiser will walk out to Fink and try to settle him down, maybe let him know what he's seeing in this at bat from Rucker. What do you go with here as your next pitch, Garrett, if you're Fink? Well, Michael, you just fooled him on the curveball a little bit there. It is one and two, but Fink has had trouble with the command early on. I would like to see some – I would like him to go back to the curveball as Rucker just struggled on that. This is a guy I've played with for a while, and he's great at hitting fastballs. So I don't want to see Fink try to go up in the zone with a fastball or anything. I'd like to try to locate a curveball maybe on the outside corner or maybe back in the dirt. But I don't know, Michael. These Fairport hitters have seemed to have the answer so far. Regardless of what pitch has been thrown. So the one, two, two outs, runner on second. Called strike three. Fink gets out of the inning, but with five runs on the board here in the second. Fairport up five to three as Victor comes to bat. So we are back in the bottom of the second. Victor down five to three. And the number nine hitter. Number eight hitter, excuse me. Tyler Pirro is up. Tyler Pirro, the walk-off winner on Wednesday night against Webster Schrader in the bottom of the 13th inning to send them home packing. And it was a three to two win for the Blue Devils. He'll try to lead Victor off here in the second with some of the same magic he had just a couple nights ago. Yeah, Garrett, he's trying to get Victor excited, energized again, get that mojo that they had at the bottom of the first. Swing and a miss from Piro. And Michael, they always talk about basketball as being a game of runs, but it seems like we're seeing a game of runs on our hands right here as it's been momentum swinging back and forth every half inning. The 2-1 from Miller. Outside, 3-1. and one. Both of these pitchers are running their pitch count up early in just the second inning. A 3-1 to Piro. In there for a strike. Count goes to 3-2. And, and Piro, just like Schelberg at the top of the lineup, he's been hitting for some great average this year, and he's done his job of getting on base. A 3-2 to Piro. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Miller with another strikeout. And the first batter for the Blue Devils goes down as Nick Kriegelstein comes up to bat. And Kriegelstein had two hits in the contest on Wednesday night couple key hits as one of them led to an RBI, which in a game which only had three runs. So after 
the success he had last game, Rucker decides to throw him back in the lineup, and we'll see if it pays off here. First pitch is in there for a strike to Kriegelstein, and here's the 0-1. Swing and a miss, 0-1-2. Miller seems like he's gotten in the, in the flow of the game so far, and, you know, really a lot of the runs that were put up weren't his fault in the first inning. Outside, one and two. He'll miss outside there, but, Michael, I think he seems to really be settling in. You see him pitching a lot faster this inning, not taking as much time, because I think he's found a groove, and he doesn't want to stray away from that. The one two is outside, count even up at two and two. Tried to go with a little slider there outside, just left it a little too far outside, but I think he's gonna come back here with fastball. Fouled straight back, two and two. So Victor looking to get a runner on and replicate what Fairport just did in the top of the second. Ball's inside. Count full at three and two. Kriegelstein would definitely take a walk. Almost hit Kriegelstein. Yeah, as the nine hitter, you're doing whatever you can to get on base, but if he wants to give you a free pass, you're going to go ahead and take that and bring up a red-hot Mitchell Shelberg. Grounded to second. Roselle fires to first in time, and there's two down now. And Roselle makes the play this time on a ground ball hit to him. This one. Victor's got guys warming up in the bullpen, Garrett. Yeah, it looks like... It's hard to tell from here, but... Yeah, Jamison Riley goes to call the guy in from the bullpen, and I think it is Weston Elkovich that was in the bullpen as he'll jog his way back yep. in now. So here's the top of the order for the Blue Devils as Mitchell Schalberg is up. He had a base hit his first time up over the head of a leaping Stanek. Oh, a great curveball there from Miller. Drops that in for strike two, and he's ahead early. And Michael, just judging by his body language, this is a confident man on that mound right now. It is, and here is the 0-2 outside, one and two. Schalberg would like to start something, maybe get a runner on and just see what happens for the Blue Devils. He follows that one off. Count stays at one and two. Good job of fighting that pitch off by Schalberg. Tries to work it to the get the pitch he wants to hit. Miller's 1-2. Fouled off again by Schalberg. Michael, I don't know if they're shifted due to the hitter or if these guys are just playing a little closer to the corners, but there seems to be a huge gap between the second baseman, Roselle, and the shortstop, Rucker. Yeah, the middle is wide open. Mitchell can try to go there. Strike three called. Miller gets the outside corner. And a scoreless second for the Blue Devils. Off the arm of Sam Miller. Fairport up, five to three, we go to the third.
So we're here in the top of the third. Fairport up 5-3. to three. And the man who led off the second inning, Matthew Linquist, is leading it off again for the Red Raiders. Yeah, they were able to bat around last inning as he'll lead off for the second straight inning now. And last time for Linquist, it was a strikeout looking. He'll try to avenge that against Fink. Fink's 1-0 is in there for a strike count even at 1-1. One one. Fink just trying to find anything that he can scratch across the strike zone and get some outs against these red-hot hitters. This one's popped straight up behind home plate. Zeiser makes the play, and Fink gets a much-needed out to start off the inning. I think yeah. this really goes a long way and speaks not just because it's an out, one of 27 that you need, or not 27 in high school baseball, one of uh, 21, but Nine. Fink's got to get his mojo back, Garrett, and, you know, I think that could, anything positive could help that. And, Michael, we could have said the same thing after last inning, too. Yeah. There it was the same result, and then it was a couple walks by Bartusik, who is now up to bat, and then Roselle. True. So, I think the second out's going to be a huge one here for Fink if he can retire Bartusik for the first time today. Nice pitch there, 1-1. One one. But I do agree with you. That was coming off an inning where he didn't let up any runs. Now he let up five in the second. So to get that out is definitely huge. Swing and a miss. One and two. The one-two to Bartusik. Swing and a miss, strike three. Bartusik looked down. back to see if the ball was caught by Dizer, and indeed it was. And that's two now. Fink seems to be pumping, although his body language does not look like it. As he still doesn't look as confident as we've seen him at times. So here's Roselle. Takes a ball. And it was a walk to Roselle in his last at bat. And at bat where Roselle was down 0-2 and he battled all the way back during his free pass to first base. Yeah, and Roselle will try to replicate to try to get something started for Fairport here in the third. Swing and a miss, one and one. The one one to Roselle. In there for a strike, one and two. Fink seems to be a lot calmer. Maybe he's got a lot of the adrenaline out in the first couple innings, but he seems to be going back to his bread and butter here. One two, two outs. That ball's outside, count even, two and two. The 2-2 two -two from Fink to Roselle. Swing and a miss, strike three. And Fink able to retire the side, all three batters on strikeouts. First gets Link was looking, and then two swinging strikeouts. We go to the bottom of the third. Victor trying to get some runs across the board and compete with Fairport. 5-3 Fairport. We go to the bottom of the third. So we're back at an innovative field in the bottom of the third. Fairport up 5-3. to three. And the pitcher for the Blue Devils, Carter Fink, who just worked a scoreless inning in the top of the third, is up to bat in the second spot. 
for the Blue Devils. The first pitch from Miller. In there for a strike. And I know the Blue Devils have scratched across three runs so far in this inning, but a lot of times this year I feel like it's been more the other team's errors and mistakes and Victor's putting the ball in play than true power and hitting from this Victor team. I want to see them be able to string together four or five hits in a row because I think Fairport's going to tighten up the defense and runs are going to be harder to come by. The 1-1 fouled back, 1-2. and two. And Garrett, you know, what you just mentioned is a great point. We saw that in the Canadagua game as well. Canadagua, who had an awful defense, really just made – a bunch of errors, and that was the scoring for the Blue Devils. Yeah, they would get a guy on with a walk, and then it would be Ken Dagg would start throwing the ball all over the yard, and next thing you know, he scores, and the same guys up to bat. A couple pass balls or a throw over. But Victor's going to need to hit today to win. The 2-2 two -two from Miller is inside, almost hit Fink. Count full, though, at 3-2. and two. Yeah, I think this is going to be a huge at-bat for Fink. Maybe he can gain a little confidence here with a base hit or even a walk. 3-2, fouled away. He'll fight to see another pitch. And a pivotal at bat here between the two pitchers in today's game. With the 2-3-4 hitters up in the top of the third, or the bottom of the third, excuse me. And Fink fouls another ball off. So he seems to be seeing Miller's pitch as well, at least this, this at bat. And the 3 2 on its way. Hit off the glove of Miller, charging his rucker, and he can't make the play. Fink on base with a single. And Victor has a runner aboard for Cooper Loyal. That looked to be one of those balls where it was lying back at the pitcher, and the pitcher just immediately, out of sheer reaction, sticks his glove out. It looked like the ball actually took a little longer to get there than Miller was expecting. He closed it, just it hit, too fast, yeah. yeah. He closed it too fast. It just hits off the end of his glove. And it perceives this delusion that it's coming at you really fast, but it really takes a little too long to get there, and Rucker not able to make the bare hand play from short. Loyal lines one to Rucker at short. To Roselle, there's one on to first. It's a double play. Fairport with a big double play, and there's two outs now. Great play from Rucker, then to Roselle. Rucker and after Bartusek at first. Yeah, Rucker after missing the bare hand on the previous play, he's able to field it. It looks like he was trying to decide whether to flip it or take it himself, but he does indeed flip it to Andretta, and Andretta delivers in time to Bartusek to get the double play, and there'll be two on with nobody out. As Wes Elkovich flies one into right. It'll get down. <laughs> Little team action there, Garrett, on that call. So yeah. it's a base hit for Weston Elkovich. Yeah, Weston Elkovich finds the weak spot in the defense, able to pop one right in there. And it's a first page base hit, which we've seen a lot of so far today. You know, I will say this. It looks like Victor has been seeing the ball and getting good at bats this inning compared to the last. And that one's low. Want to know did Yeah, they've been able to that? eliminate the strikeouts and start putting the ball in play as they now have two hits this inning. Rosigliano lines one out to right field. It will be a foul ball. Good piece of hitting there for Masigliano. Just slices foul. So, the 1-1 one, one to the number five hitter, Jamison Rosigliano, with two outs. Swing and a miss. Took a big cut on that one. Count goes to one and two. Center fielder, James... Polygony is playing way over in right center as there's a huge gap between left and center. Rosigliano seems like they have the right risk scouting report on him as he's now fouled off three to that side of the field. But if he's able to lift one into left center, this could be extra bases, maybe even a triple. Or maybe he could even run all the way around, definitely scoring Elkovich. He grounds one. It's tapped to Miller at the mound. He fires to Bartusik in time. So Victor with two hits, but nothing to show for on the scoreboard. 5-3, Fairport leads. We go to the top of the fourth.
So here we are in the top of the fourth inning. Fairport up 5-3. to three. Carter Fink still out there for the Blue Devils. Delivers his first pitch as a ball. And it's been a pair of singles this evening so far for Steven Rizzolo. As the top of the order has been the bright spot so far. Although they have gotten production from all over in the lineup tonight. But Rizzolo's single up the middle in his first at bat and then into right center. The 1-1's one outside, 2-1. and one. To the catcher, Rizzolo. Fink's 2-1. And Rizzolo oh. and Fink played a lot of club ball together on the Diamond Pro Canes team. As I'm sure they know each other very well. But enemies right now. The 3-1. Inside, ball four. Rizzolo works a walk for the Red Raiders. Michael, Rizzolo's a guy It's hard to miss inside without hitting him as he gets right on top of that plate, kind of like Anthony Rizzo from the left side yeah. of the plate. He likes to crowd the plate. It's and similar it leads... last names, Garrett. Yeah, it, it starts, maybe that's why he decided to take that approach, but it does lead to a lot of hit-by-pitches. And having pitched against him, it's a lot more intimidating when you can't see the whole plate. This one is ripped out to left center field. On the run is Ruffalo. He's under it. He'll make the play. Stanek with a fly out. And there's one out now. And a loud out there from William Stanek as he gave that one a ride. But the speed from these Victor outfielders is unlike any other. As Ruffalo was sitting under that one for a couple seconds. And since it is such a big outfield out there and there is so much space, you know, we were saying it in the Schalberg's at bat and then uh, Jamison Versigliano's at bat that there's a lot of space for these guys to hit the ball. And oh, Sam Miller gets plunked. And this Mi time he does. Miller, wh where's that one? Looked like it might have hit him in the chest somewhere. It maybe on, in on the hands? I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah, maybe. Not a deadening hit by pitch, but enough to get him as he points at the refs and shows him. Looks like it got him on one of the hands, maybe. Maybe a forearm, but. Regardless, it's first and second with one out here in the top of the fourth for the Red Raiders. Thinks nothing and nothing. In there for a strike on the off-speed pitch. 0-1. Oh Inside. And despite the traffic on base this inning, Coach Rucker staying with his veteran, staying with his guy that he trusts. could see they've got a great relationship between the two is I don't know if I've seen a guy with this much trust in someone but Rucker's gonna ride with his guy he's gonna ride hope he brings him to a victory if not and Owen Andretta at the dish for the Red Raiders counts two and one to him and here is Fink's two one in there for a strike count evens up at two and two and it was Andretta who hit the Huge double, which Doms thought it was a home run for a little bit, but that did score two runs on the ground rule double. Right. He was able to just plunk it over Piero's head in left field. The farthest ball we've seen yet today. There's strike three called. And Jaretta down looking. Fink gets a big strikeout. There's now two out with two runners on. And stepping up to the dish is Scott Thompson. Scotty Thompson's got two strikeouts so far. This evening, one the first looking, and then retired swinging. And he's in his last at bat. And he swings and misses right there, 0 and 1. Yeah, Fink looks like he's got the upper hand on Thompson so far today, but this would be a big spot if Thompson was able to come up with a hit here. The 0 1 is way outside, 1 and 1. Rizzolo's on second, and Jaretta is on first. And the 1-1 to Thompson's outside, 2-1. and one. Nice stop there by Zeiser, limiting the runners from not being able to advance. Or else Miller could have moved into scoring position. But a key at bat here in the top of the fourth with two on and two out. The 2-1 to Thompson popped up. It'll make the seats. 2-2. Two and two. Michael Scotty's been struggling to hit the curveball so far today as we've seen a couple swings and misses and then swings like that where he doesn't necessarily barrel the ball up. I believe both of his strikeouts have been on the curveball, though, so far today. 
Two two is inside. Count full at three and two. He went to the inside fastball there, just misses on the inside corner. We'll see if he goes back to the curveball or if he sticks with the heat. The three two is hit. The second, and Schalber grabs it. He fires the first in time, and Fink gets another scoreless inning here in the fourth. Fairport still up 5-3 with the Victor Blue Devils coming to bat. Here at an Innovative Field in the bottom of the fourth inning. Starting it off for the Blue Devils. The number six hitter, Adam Ruffalo. And Adam made a nice play in center field last inning, Garrett. Well, he showed his speed, which has been highlighted all year. He swings and misses on the first pitch from Miller, and it's 0-1. And, and an RBI ground out to second baseman Rosello in his first at bat, where it was second and third, and Fairport decided to play the infield back. Adam taking what they give him and not going to run home. Adam just blasted a ball foul. <laughs> in the right, way out there. It almost cleared the stadium. He's now behind early, though, as Miller's a lot of guy with a lot of confidence right now. Is going to come right at him. The 0 2 just misses 1 and 2. So Miller's 1 2 to Ruffalo. Lone and outside. 2 and 2. Good couple of leaves there from Ruffalo to run the count even. Wouldn't be surprised if Miller came back with something off speed here. Here's the 2-2. It's sliced down the first baseline. Great play by Bartusik as he gets it, and he takes it himself to the first base, and there's one out. Yeah, that's one of those where you just try to stay down, try to look into the glove, even though you know never know what promising hop you're going to get. But playing on a field like this where the dirt's freshly raked and done before every game, it's you're going to get true hops and a great play to stay down there by Bartusik. Whoa, almost hit Grady Kessler right there. <laughs> almost got a piece of his helmet as Grady ducks out of the way. So the 1-0 to Kessler. Swing and a miss, 1-1. One one. So the 1-1 one one to Kessler is hit up the middle and booted by Rucker at short. Kessler is aboard with an infield single. That was and looking like it was going to be get through clean, but Rucker with nice hustle there, although that one looked like it just shot right off his wrist, and Kessler's aboard. I'm not sure if he, he would have made that play, even if he did corral it, Garrett. Yeah, no, definitely a tough play. Not sure if they'll score that as an error hit. I think they're going to give Kessler a hit on that one. I would, yep, they do. But certainly a play that Rucker was capable of making. Ball's low. It's number one. Tyler Pirro in the eight spot. 
Piro struck out swinging in his first at bat on a high fastball from Miller. The 1-1 is through into right field. Piro with a single. And two straight singles for the Victor Blue Devils as Kessler and Piro were aboard. Great job there by Grady to dodge that ball because if that would have hit him, he would have been out. And it would have been the second out of the inning, but instead it, he lets it go by. And Piro, what he's done so often this season, getting on board. And a little bit of a mound visit right here for Fair. the Red Raiders and Sam Miller. Fairport does have all of their top three pitching uh, guys available today. So we could see Antonio Jorge who pitched five shutout innings the other night against Penfield or possibly even bring in William Sanick, the third baseman, to come in. But I think they're going to leave Miller in for now. So what are they telling Miller here in the mound visit, Garrett? Well, I think they're telling Miller to really attack Krigelstein as he is the nine hitter in today's game and not let it him get on base and load the bases for the top of the lineup with just one out. But I think they're leaving him in, and I think they're going to trust him as he seems to be their guy here in today's game. But I think they're trying to get a ground out. It's just a couple innings ago, or I think it was last inning, when Carter Fink had the hit to lead off the inning, he was able to get a grounder. And, and, and this is what you were asking for, for Victor to do, strand some hits together instead of rely on bad plays from the defense, and they've done it so far here in the fourth. This is another huge at-bat. Nick Kriegelstein will find himself in. First pitch to knock one to the outfield. It'll be a likely RBI. The 1-0 to Kriegelstein. He gets hit. Bases loaded now for Mitchell Schalberg, the leadoff man. And Victor has something brewing in the bottom of the fourth with only one out. Yeah, Kriegelstein didn't have a chance to get out of the way. Soaked that one right in the ribs. And all of a sudden, the Victor student section is going to stand back up. And this game just got a lot more energy from it as it's got a lot more interesting too yeah as the fairport will now bring the corners in as stanick and bartusik are on the grass and nothing and nothing misses one and oh with nowhere to put schalberg miller is going to want to try to find command of the strike zone unlike what he's done the to kriegel scene with just plunking them and putting the bases loaded that pitch i guess it clips the outside corner one and one if mitchell's able to get Aboard here, I think we could see a pitching change coming from Fairport. As maybe they would go to Antonio Jorge, who's not playing in the game at all right now. The 1 1 to Schelberg is grabbed there by Stanek. An unbelievable play by the third baseman, Will Stanek. And there's two outs. What a leaping grab it was there indeed, Michael. What a play by the third baseman. He's been on varsity for his second year in a row now as a junior for a reason. He saves what could, would have been two runs. And if he's playing on the back instead of in, that's a play that's going to be even trickier as that ball was slicing. But he's in on the infield and he's able to make an insane leaping grab. Fink chops one to short. Rucker fires to first in time. And Victor leaves. The base is loaded. And it's a bundle of hugs from the Fairport dugout as they give Will Stanek their appreciation for that amazing play. And it's been a couple outstanding defensive plays now with guys on from Fairport. And if you're Mitchell Schalberg right there, that has to kill you. You, hit a, you put the bat on the ball, did everything right. Just an unbelievable play by Stanek. And we will go to the fifth, 5-3. Fairport still leads.
So we go to the top of the fifth with Jackson Rucker up for the Red Raiders. The first pitch from Fink is high 1-0. Fink's Rucker. still in this game, Garrett. Yeah, Rucker unsuccessful in his first two attempts with a ground out and then a strikeout looking. 2-0. Fink's got to be nearing the 100 pitch mark by now as there's been traffic on base in every inning. But he's been able to work through three three innings so far without letting up any runs. Only one, the one big inning for Fairport where all the runs came in a hurry. Rucker swings and misses, and the count's 2-1. and one. And Here is the 2-1. Hi, 3-1. and one. If you're Carter Fink, you got to find a way to get these next two over the plate. You cannot let Rucker, with a lot of speed, get on to start the inning via the base on balls. And there's a strike. Count goes to three and two. Similar pitch to that, which he looked at last at bat and was called out on strike three in a punch out. Three, two, outside, ball four. Rucker walks. Fink tried to go back to that same fastball in the outside corner, but flew it a little too far. And that'll bring up Matthew Lindquist. And Rucker's coming out. I think we might see a pitching change here, Garrett. Yeah, I think. He's been, I, I'm surprised he's taking him out now. I mean, Matthew Lincoln is 0 for 2 against uh, Fink, and neither of his at-bats have looked very well. It's a pair of strikeouts, but maybe it's just a mound meeting. But I think we're going to see him hand the ball to Weston Elkovich, although you never know. By the way, they're visiting. I think Rucker's getting Fink's input as well on what to do here and the whole team at least the infield. But the next man up, we saw him warming up in the bullpen, will most likely be Wesson Elkovich. And they're going to leave. Rucker Fink does in. not take the ball from Fink. Surprising yeah. decision to me. I don't know if we have a mound visit count, but it seems like he's made his way out there two or three times now. I know in the MLB, you only get a certain amount of mound visits. But I think the next time he heads out there, we're going to see the first baseman, Weston, back on the mound. But... Carter's been able to work through the last two innings without surrendering any runs, but we'll see if it pays off. First pitch is low, 1-0 to Matthew Linguist. Linguist, a member of the Grota Pro Tigers for the last couple of years. We've got seven guys on this Fairport team, as long, along with Grady and Weston from the Victor side, so a lot of these guys know each other. have been playing summer ball with each other for a while. The 1-0. Just clips the outside corner of the plate, one and one. Close pitch right there from Fink. Yeah, it looked like it might have been out of the zone, but the ump gives him it. And Link was off balance on the curveball there, but he follows it back. So one and two we have set up. Fink will be looking for a strikeout to try to keep himself in this game a little bit longer. But I think there's a short leash now. Swing and a miss, strike three. There's the first out of the fifth. And coming up now is Matthew Bartusik. Bartusik a walk and then a strikeout in his two tries so far against Carter. See if he can move Rucker over. Swing and a miss. Zeiser checks the runner at first. Just close getting call back there. there. Rucker got a pretty Rucker. aggressive secondary lead, but he's able to slide back in in time. Bartusa calls time. And you were right there, Garrett. Rucker with a big lead. Zeiser checked him back, almost had the out. The 0 1 to Bartusik. Swing and a miss. Had him guessing on that one. 0 2. Michael, we got a guy with a lot of speed on first base, base, but we do have the assistant coach acting at head coach and also coaching third base this year, or this game. So. This is where that suspension comes back to haunt you. And swing and a miss, strike three, back-to-back -back strikeouts for Carter Fink. And after that mound visit, he seemed to find his mojo again. Yeah, I don't know what coach told him, but it seems to be working. Because that's now two in a row. That'll bring up the nine-hitter, nine Jonathan Roselle, who struck out in his last at-bat. Can Fink get three straight strikeouts? That is the question. Throws to first. Check it. Rucker back. And you see Rucker with that lead at first. Fink's aware of it. The first pitch. Fouled back. Oh, and one. 
Yeah, we'll see if they send Rucker in motion here. Try to get him in scoring position now with two outs for the nine hitter, Roselle. Although with a guy like Fink who throws pretty hard and then with Zeiser at home plate, it's gonna be hard to snag a base. Sliced foul on that one, 0 and 2. So 0 2, two outs to the number nine hitter, Jonathan Roselle. And this is a big spot for Fink. This is a big spot for the Blue Devils, especially what they did in the last inning, getting runners on. They'll like to keep things here at 5-3, to three, going to the bottom of the fifth. And it's 1-2 and two to Roselle. One, two, two outs, one runner on. Out low and outside again. Similar pitches there from Fink. Count even up at two and two. Yeah, Roselle able to work a walk down from 0-2 in his first at bat. Looking for a similar result here. As Fink needs to come back in him with a strike now. The 2-2 two -two from Fink. Low and outside yet again. Yeah, that's three, three straight misses. Uh, outside a couple in the dirt and now that one just low and also in the opposite batter's box we'll see what he chooses to go with here as he throws over to Rucker at first who dives back in in time maybe a little quick pitch there try to keep Rucker off balance but Rizal does a good job of calling time and you see Elkovich now get off the bag so they're not going to check Rucker back well Rucker will be stealing here Michael it's 3-2 with two outs right. So the runner will be in motion, so a hit, hit to the gap will surely score. And swing and a miss, strike three. Carter Fink, three strikeouts in the inning. Victor down three to five, but they're looking to add some things on here in the bottom of the fifth. Here in the bottom of the fifth inning at Innovative Field, Cooper Loyal will start things off for the Blue Devils. And there's a strike, 0 and 1. Loyal grounded into that double play for the first and second out of the inning in the third inning. The Blue Devils are running out of time here as it's the bottom of the fifth, and they have not yet scratched a run across since the first inning in which they did all of their damage so far today. The 1 and 1 to Loyal. Ooh, up and in. Two and one. Miller's 2-1 to Loyal. In there for a strike. Count evens up at two and two. Seemed to try to throw that one a little extra hard. It looked like we saw a couple mile per hour velocity increase from Miller there. Balls outside. Three and two to Loyal. So the count's full to Cooper, and he walks. That's a huge 
at bat there from Cooper. Avenging last at bat where he made two outs. This time he's aboard to lead off the inning with a walk, and that will bring up Weston Elkovich, who singled into right center in his last at bat. Elkovich, who will be probably the soon pitcher for the Blue Devils in the later innings, receives the first pitch, and it's a ball, 1 0 on the inside part. Yeah, we'll see how long of a leash they give Sam Miller as well as they still Fairport still has their two other options in. Did Elkovich go? No, he did not. 2-0 to him. Great take there from Weston. Yeah, I think if Miller walks Weston here, we're going to see a pitching change to Antonio Jorge off the bench. The 2-0 just gets an outside part of the plate. 2-1. Great pitch there for Miller to come back. The 2-1 is hit into left field, but it'll get down in foul territory, and the count is even at 2-2. Two and two. Ball had a lot of movement on it. As for a second, it looked like we were thinking maybe it was going to drop in there, but the whole Fairport team seemed to run after that one. It looks like they're sending out a guy to the bullpen to warm up. So it was a good estimate from you, Garrett. The leash... For Miller is not that long. It looks like they sent out pitcher Nathan Mathis to the bullpen instead of what I thought was going to be Antonio Jorge. And the 2-2 two -two to Elkovich is hit into left field. Charging is the left fielder Andretta. He'll make the catch. And there is one out now for the Blue Devils. Here's Dr. Tim Terranova, the proud superintendent of Victor <laughs> Central Schools. Dino. I thought you were telling me to get out. Oh, stand up. And up now for the Blue Devils is Jamison Rosigliano. Capped foul. Count goes to one and one. We had a little guest celebrity appearance there from our proud superintendent. Very proud. Yes. Definitely would be even more proud with a victory today from your Blue Devils. But Sigliano will try to avenge his day so far. It's been an 0 for 2 effort. And the 1 1 to Sigliano is upstairs, 2 and 1. And in case you caught the audio there, we thank Dino Falone for stopping into the booth and helping us out today. And the 2 1 to Sigliano. Grounded fair down the third baseline. Loyal stays at second. Rosigliano with a single, just fair. That'll bring up Adam Ruffalo with one out, two guys on after a walk to Loyal and then a single from Jamison and Weston Elkovich in between. That was almost a hit right on the line, but a great play there from the left fielder Owen Andretta. Also had that ground rule double earlier in today's contest, but. Adam Ruffalo already has an RBI today. Trying to make this big inning for the Blue Devils. It would start with him getting on base here. And you know, when Adam gets on base, he can score from pretty much anywhere because he is such a speed threat, like we've mentioned all season, Garrett. Michael, and Victor's losses, this is where they have not been able to come up with hits. In their wins, this is where it feels like the defense from the other team sometimes starts to, you know throw the ball booted around the infield so I don't think we're going to see that from Fairport I think we're going to see, need to see some hits here from Victor and maybe give a couple of rides to the outfield get those runners running the 0-1 comes across the plate 0-2 to Ruffalo Ruffalo cannot afford to strike out he's got to do whatever he can to move those runners over if not get on base himself the 0-2 just tapped foul so Ruffalo stays alive Loyal's on second. Rosigliano's on first. Victor's trying to score for the first time since the first inning. And there is called strike three. Ruffalo goes down looking as Miller gets another strikeout and Grady Kessler, the third baseman. And Miller, was, to the plate. Miller was able to buckle him there on the curveball. Adam not able to lift the shoulder off his, off the, lift the bat off his shoulders. But Grady right. Kessler will step in with a huge opportunity here in the bottom of the fifth. And Kessler slaps one foul right back here. 
Oh, and one to Kessler. And foul ball made it all the way up to the sweets. Just a showcase of Kessler's power. I'll try to straighten this one out. And the 0-1 is tapped down first baseline. Grabbing it is Bartuzic. And that will do it. Another scoreless inning for Sam Miller and the Fairport Red Raiders. 5-3, they still lead. We're going to the sixth. So we're here, Garrett, top of the sixth inning, and there is a pitching change. Wes Anulkovich, like we mentioned earlier, is out there on the mound warming up. Break him down for us. Well, Wes Anulkovich, he's got a lot of pitches that he likes to throw, but he's had a lot of success with the changeup this year as well as the fastball, and that, he really had those two pitches working the other night against Webster Schrader, which allowed him to work through six innings. But he's going to definitely need to hold this Fairport lineup down. He cannot allow any runs here. And Especially with a two-run deficit, you know, he's coming into the game and maybe he's a little nervous, but he's been here before last year. I think he's going to settle in, and I think he's going to provide a couple scoreless innings for Victor. And Elkovich is a high, high power thrower, throws high velocity, and can pitch against the best of them, really. And stepping up to the dish. And they'll bring him in here for the lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup against Steven Rizzolo. The top of the order for the Red Raiders. Yeah, a pair of singles and a walk and three attempts for Steven Rizzolo thus far tonight. As we see half the field covered in shade, the other half still shining in sun. So Elkovich's first pitch is in there for a strike on the outside part of the plate against the lefty Rizzolo. Elkovich also loves to work fast. He's not a guy who wants to sit around, take his time on the mound. Falls low, one and one. Elkovich, working fast indeed, Garrett. The 1-1. One, one. It's hit in foul territory on the third base side. 1-2. One, one of the biggest differences between the Red Wings and high school baseball is that uh, foul balls are not souvenirs. You do have to return those to the dugout. But, Michael, you can just see how far up on the plate Rizzolo likes to get, and his hands are, like, on top of the plate. The 1-2 fouled back. And we'll do another one-two pitch again. That pitch was just inside, and he swung, and it just hit him on the hands because he's, he's just so far out. Yeah, he it was off be, speed. Yeah, he likes to be up in the box, and when you're that close to the plate, sometimes the ball will run inside, and it's hard to get the barrel to it. But he's definitely had success doing it, so no t nothing he needs to change now. So the one-two to the lefty Rizzolo. Low and outside, two and two. When you are on top of the plate like that, sometimes the zone does seem to expand in the opposite direction. So the one, the pitch in the batter's box that maybe is usually a ball can sometimes be a strike. But it's count is full. Yeah, it's been a great at bat here from Rizzo. Followed a couple pitches off, and he's making Elkovich work for his first out. A three-two from Elkovich to Rizzo. Fought off again. Foul. 
Rizzolo's shown how he just stays alive in these at-bats, Garrett, like you were saying. And he's just extending the pitch count and the total time for this at-bat for Elkovich. This one's popped into shallow left field. Loyal going back there, and he makes the play. All the way from shortstop, Cooper Loyal ranged back into shallow left field and made the play for the first out. That ball possibly had a little more carry on it than Loyal thought maybe. It looked like it was going to be a routine play, but they kept still carrying. jogging by the time he caught it. But good talk there from the outfield, and Loyal able to range back for the first out of the top of the sixth. So here's Will Stanek. First pitch he sees is high. Stanek, who made that amazing diving play, which I would say is the play of the game so far on the defensive side of the ball because Victor would have scored two runs off of it. Yes, yeah, certainly today's play of the game. And he's already got uh, a hit in this contest as well. He's actually got two hits and then a fly out so far in today's context. So maybe he is vying for the Sierra Sports player of the game. You know, that always has to come with a win as well. So Fairport still has a lot of work to do in this one, but it was an amazing play that Schalberg hit wonderfully. It's just an unbelievable play by Stanek at third. So the one-two for Melkovic, swing and a miss, strike three. There's a strikeout for Weston, and there's two down here in the top of the sixth. That's what we like to call Tiger D there. <laughs> the strikeout from Elkovich is two Tigers going at it. He's able to retire the two-hitter Stanek. Now it'll be the pitcher, Sam Miller. We'll see if he trots out there next inning, Michael, as we just saw Carter exit after last inning. Yeah, I think that's one of the interesting storylines. I think they could go to their bullpen, as we saw them warming up earlier. And the 1-0. Popped straight up and straight back here. Really high. 1-1. One one. That, that foul ball seems to be popular among the kids here. Always a fun thing at ballparks. The 1-1. One one. This is two and one. See if Elkovich can make it a one, two, three inning, or if Miller has other ideas. The two one from Elkovich, fouled away again. You know, at Innovative Field, the Red Wing Stadium, you do get a lot of foul balls in seats that you're usually sitting in. Last time I was here, I had so many foul balls come my way. I walked away with two balls after the end of the day. A successful outing. A little check swing there for Miller as he follows off his third in a row now. Count remains at two and two. This might be a one, two, three inning, but they're certainly making him throw a lot of pitches this inning so far, although with only two innings of work expected. There's called strike three, Garrett. Elkovich with another strikeout, and he's pumped up like usual. And the Victor Blue Devils are down five to three, coming to bat in the bottom of the sixth. They want it. They need it here at Innovative Field.
So here in the bottom of the sixth, Tyler Pirro's up against Sam Miller, who stays in the game. And the first pitch is in there for a strike, 0 and 1 to Pirro. Tyler Pirro, 1 for 2 thus far, with a strike on his first at bat. And then he had the single in between first and second base. He hits one foul here. And it's 0 and 2 to Pirro. Miller's still in the game, Garrett. We were expecting a pitching change. And 0-2, called strike three on Pirro. He went on the off speed and it locked Tyler up. And still in the game for good reason as he comes out and retires the first batter at the bottom of the six on the backdoor curve. Tyler just looks at it and heads back to the dugout and it'll bring up Nick Kriegelstein in the ninth spot. Kriegelstein, who got hit last time up, receives a ball high, 1-0 from Miller. The 1 0. Fouled back, 1 and 1. Ooh. Right at the camera. Pretty cool shot there as Kriegelstein will fall even. 1 1. Called strike two. Kriegelstein saw. And it's 1 and 2 to him. Michael, only five outs left for this Victor squad, so they're running out of time. Need to make something happen here in next inning. And Kriegelstein waves at that one. There's a strikeout for Sam Miller. And there's two down here in the bottom of the sixth. And Mitchell Schalberg, the leadoff man, is going to come up with two outs already and nobody aboard. And now just four outs left for Fairport to get. As that'll bring around the top of the order as Victor tries to get something going. Schalberg hits one to short and it's booted by Rucker. It goes into left field. Mitchell will stay at first, and he's got another base hit and another single. And there's now been a couple balls we've seen bounce off of Rucker. Maybe just not able to quite read the hops there, but that would have been a tough play regardless with Mitchell's speed. I think they score that as a hit, and for good reason. I don't. I think going to the backhand, and you saw that hit into like the hole where it was. It would have been a really tough play for Rucker to make. And Finkel... Take a couple more steps toward the third baseline than normal as he gets a sign from Coach Rucker. See if Mitchell could possibly be in motion here with one on and two out. First pitch Fink sees is outside, 1-0. and The 1-0 to Fink. Hit. On the ground to Rucker. Rucker gathers, fires in time. And this time the backhand is good from Jackson Rucker as he fires a dart across the diamond. And there's only three outs left for this Victor team. And Fairport can taste the sectional victory, but not so fast. We're going to the seventh. 5-3, Fairport leads. And in the top of the seventh inning, in the sectional final, Owen Andretta to face off against the lefty 
Weston Elkovich. What could be the last inning of tonight's contest as Victor is running out of time. Owen Andretta has been a reason that Fairport leads 5-3 with that huge two RBI double back in the second inning. Andretta's pitch is fouled straight back here, Garrett. And it almost makes it in the booth. Oh my goodness. Almost a play that we had to make. Yeah, almost took a hop and hit us up here, but certainly some action up there. And the 1-1 one, one now from Elkovich is in there for a strike to Andretta. And Andretta's now behind in the count, one and two, as Weston looks to retire his fourth batter in a row after a one, two, three, six. And the one, two is laced into right field and it'll get down for a base hit. Kriegelstein plays it on a hop and fires it into Schalberg, but Andretta is aboard with a single. Scotty Thompson will now step up to bat. Looked to get going for the first time tonight. He's 0 for 3 thus far with two strikeouts, but Owen Andretta doing his part and trying to provide some insurance, run, insurance runs for the Red Raiders. Thompson, who really struggled against Fink today, we'll see how he matches up against Elkovich. First pitch inside, 1 0. You can see Rucker and Ferrari telling the right fielder Kriegelstein to shade back out in right field as they view Thompson as that power threat. And the lefty move there from West, that's gotten a lot of guys in his day. Is yep. It's definitely harder to read lefties than it is righties on the mound. But it does seem that Kriegelstein and Piero are a little deeper than center fielder Adam. Maybe due to the speed of Ruffalo, or maybe Thompson's less likely to hit it. And the 2-0 is stra fouled straight back off of the bat of Thompson. See if he can do something here for the first time today. Maybe move the runner over. And the 2-1 makes it into the seats, 2-2 two two on the first base side. And Elkovic is going to look for a strikeout here. It would be his third of the game already, just his second inning of work. One looking and one swinging. The 2-2 two -two from Elkovic. High 3-2. This is a big pitch now from Weston. Yeah, this is a huge pitch. One of those momentum swings that we've had. Haven't had a ton of them since the early innings, but if Fairport could get the first two guys on, that would be big. 3-2, swing and a miss. Weston delivers strike three in a big spot. As Thompson goes down again today, and he has been a weak spot for this Fairport team. And it'll be another Tiger on Tiger matchup with Weston facing off against Jackson Rucker, but Weston now has three strikeouts in just four of his, as just four of his outs recorded. So he's been dealing so far today. He checks Andretta back at first. And he gets ready to throw the first pitch to Rucker, who fouls it straight back, 0-1. That was a big strikeout from Elkovich there, Garrett. Now he can set up a double play possibly and obviously not have a runner on second who could score. It was a big strikeout. The 0-1. Grounded foul yeah, down Victor's, the third baseline. Victor's been having... Trouble getting runs ac across as it is. The last thing they need is to see their deficit move from two to three or four. So great job by Elkovich there. Can he bounce back and get these last two outs of the inning now without letting any runs across? He's way ahead of Rucker here, though. I'd like to see him try for the strikeout or try to throw one low, possibly get Rucker to ground out into a double play. So the 0-2 to Rucker. It's fouled back, and the count stays at 0-2. Rucker has fouled back a lot of pitches this at-bat. The 0-2 hits one high out to left center field. Ruffalo comes in, and he'll make the play, and there's two down. Did not follow that one back. That was hit pretty well, but a sure out for the center fielder, Ruffalo. And that'll be two down. Bring out Matthew Linquist. Matthew 
Link was yet to reach today in his day. So here is Linquist, and the first pitch is fouled back. Reminiscence of last at bat against Rucker early on, Garrett. So the 0 1 to Linquist. Swing and a miss. High fastball. 0 2. Linquist, a couple of strikeouts so far. This will be his first time up against Elkovich. The 0-2 just misses, 1-2. and two. Thought he had strike three there as he started to jog in yep. towards the first base dugout, but the ump says no, and we'll try again. The 1-2 from Elkovich. Fouled back. Straight behind home plate and into the seats. One of the fun parts about baseball is always seeing where the foul balls are going to land. <laughs> It's been the kid's favorite thing here today, it looks like. They're just running around the ballpark, retrieving the foul balls, and returning them. Well, Michael, we haven't seen a lot of runs recently, so <laughs> maybe that's why. The 1-2 fouled straight back to the screen. Count stays at 1-2. and two. Now I'm looking at the scoreboard, Garrett. Fairport and Victor even with seven hits as total. But obviously Fairport up 5-3. to three. And the 1-2 from Elkovich just hit foul. You could see... Fairport had the majority of their hits in the first couple innings. And you can see Link was right there just getting a piece of just getting a piece of it. Yeah, just Link went, that out there. Yeah, he's been off balance now on the last two pitches, so Weston can really throw whatever he wants. And Link was sort of at the mercy of him right now. The one two is outside. Zeiser checks the runner back at first. He's safe. And it's two and two to Linkwist. So 2-2, two, two, two outs, runner on first. The pitch to Link was swung on and missed. High cheese, Garrett, on the off speed. Yeah, uh, I was confused there for a second when you said high cheese because usually that pertains to the fastball as Weston threw more of a change up there. But regardless, it's his fifth strikeout so far tonight. And we'll move to bottom seven. Victor, down to the last three outs. At Innovative Field in the bottom of the seventh, everything on the line for the Victor Blue Devils. Their season on the line for the second straight year. They're in the sectional finals, Garrett. And they're down 5-3. to three. Cooper Loyal is up for the Blue Devils. What's going through all the Blue Devils' minds right now? I mean, the most important thing here is just trying to get on base and move it to the next guy. You're not going to win this game with one swing. And Loyal's sort of done that today as he's already gotten two walks. So if he could just produce a third here, maybe a base hit, and get this rally started, and then see where it goes from there. The 1-0 from Miller is laced into left center field, and it's going to get down for a base hit. Cooper Loyal's aboard with a double. And extra bases it is for the number three hitter as he looks in the dugout. Looks like he pulled the seven iron out there for the celebration as he starts the Blue Devils with a leadoff double, and that'll bring up the red-hot pitcher, Weston Elkovich. And the crowd is absolutely excited and pumped into this game now. Cooper has just given a jolt of energy to the Victor Blue Devils fans and the team themselves. And it seems like we're going to see a pitching change here after the double by Loyal, as it looks like they might turn it over to Nathan Mathis out of the bullpen, but we'll see. And Sam Miller... 
who's had an excellent outing. We'll see, Garrett. You know, we saw this earlier with Fink. When Rucker came out, we thought Weston was going to come in then. He didn't. It actually worked out for Fink to keep him in the game. But, you know, this is, this is a key decision from an assistant head coach who is because their head coach has been suspended. Yeah, head coach Kieran Murphy not able to coach today due to the one-game suspension. And it's calls like this that have been the reason that he's been able to bring him to the sectional final. But looks like the assistant's going to decide to leave Miller in as he tips his cat out toward left field. Not sure why there. Oh, because of the bullpen. Decides not to go to it, though, and Miller will pitch against Elkovich. Nothing and nothing. Elkovich is hit sky high in the infield. Miller gets exactly what he wanted. Stanek's right there. He makes the play. There's one down. Possibly a little trouble there from Stanek. It looked like he had a, a shaky mitt there, but the guy who saved a couple runs earlier able to make that, and just like that, there's now one out. So here's Jamison Rosigliano in a massive spot for the Blue Devils with Loyal on second. Rosigliano at the dish. The nothing and nothing pitch from Miller. Swung on a miss. Big swing there from Rosigliano, 0-1. Yeah, if you're Rosigliano, you cannot you got to just do whatever you can to get on base as the momentum seems to have swung back to Fairport as they realize they're two outs away from the brick. And the 0-1 is swung on and missed, 0-2 to Rosigliano. And after the leadoff double, it felt like Victor had all the energy, and now it's 0-2 with one out. And it seems like the energy has gone back to the Red Raiders. And the 0-2 is just tapped foul by Rosigliano. Right off the end of the bat, just able to get a piece of that one and stay alive. Sam Miller seems he's calmed down after the pop-up from Elkovich and gathered himself here in the bottom of the seventh. The 0-2, swing and a miss, strike three. The Red Raiders are one out away from a sectional title. And it all lies on the shoulders of Adam Ruffalo, whether or not he can keep this Blue Devil squad alive. Cooper Loyal showing signs of encouragement from second base. Ruffalo has one of Victor's three RBIs so far today. See if he can make it number two and bring this game within one run with a single. And the nothing and nothing way up and in to Ruffalo, one and O. Oh. That almost hit him. Indeed it did, Michael. O on O. Fouled straight back, one and one. Good sign there for Adam. Anytime you get a foul ball like that straight back, that means you're on it. Just misses the barrel, but count run will run even. Victor only has two strikes left. So the one one to Ruffalo is a very pivotal pitch here. You don't want to get down if you're Adam. You want to put something in play and get it through. Swung on and missed, one and two. A dirty curveball there from Sam Miller. And we are a strike away, Garrett, from crowning a class double A champion. And Ruffalo's got to keep his composure here. Just because you're one strike away doesn't mean it's over. One, two, two outs. Runner on second. The pitch from Miller. Tapped to Miller at the mound. He fires to first in time, and it's all over. The Fairport Red Raiders are your class double A section five champions. And Miller gets mobbed. The Fairport at the bump. faithful is going wild. Seas of red throughout behind the third base dugout. And what a job by Sam Miller. Seven innings of work. A great job all around. His defense came to play today, and the bats were hot in the second inning. Victor could not score other than the first inning. Fairport did not score other than the second inning. But it was a much more exciting game we had today, Garrett. And congratulations to the Fairport Red Raiders. An unbelievable play from Will Stanek at third. I think he saved the game for them. And I think he's going to be our CR Sports star player of the game. Yeah, indeed. A great performance from him as he made that diving play with the corners in with the bases loaded. Certainly would have scored two, if not more. But regardless, it'll be a Fairport win, and they'll get steal the sectional block as Jackson Rucker wins the family battle and brings it home for the Rucker family. A great season, nonetheless, from the Victor Blue Devils. A disappointing loss, though, that for the second straight year. How did they move forward after this one, Garrett? 
Well, you got to regroup before next year. They got a long offseason ahead of them, especially after losing their second sectional final in a row. But they'll have lots of talent coming back. As we saw, Weston Elkovich, what a pitching performance he put on in the last two games. So uh, they'll have lots of talent back, and I think they'll be one of the great competitors in AA again next year. And we'll bring it into the broadcast booth one last time to say thank you for everybody who tuned in. And this has just been a blast for us, Garrett, here today at Innovative Field, a great opportunity for us. If you want to hear more from us, if you've been incited, if you've liked listening to the broadcast, follow us on Instagram at CR Sports. That's where we'll post the star player of the game interview with Will Stanek. And congratulations to the Fairport Red Raiders in an excellent season. Yes, congratulations indeed. What an opportunity is right. Uh, just to be able to come up here in the booth and experience this once-of-a-lifetime opportunity that hopefully we can experience many more times. But a great contest overall. And what a job by Fairport. All credit goes to them as they are your Section 5 AA baseball champions. And a great thank you goes out to Innovative Field for letting us come up here as well. And stay tuned, everybody. Follow us on Instagram at CR Sports and listen to our podcast on Spotify at the CR Sports Podcast. We thank you. So long.